Welcome back, everybody. I hope you had a good lunch. Um, well, we'll won't, won't, won't waste any time. Tom Chris is going to talk about uh, documenting your project with MK Docs. Hi there. Uh, thanks for coming today. Uh, my name's Tom Christie. I'm going to give you a quick rundown today of a little project that I've been working on, which is a documentation builder for Markdown called MK Docs or Make Docs or Muck Docs. I'm not really sure which yet. Uh, so here we go. Let's have a little a little look through. First of all. Um, I want to apologize today if there's any bits of this that are a little bit patchy. I've been a little bit busy lately. In the last few days, I launched a Kickstarter for a project of mine called Django Res Framework, which uh, has been uh, like out, outrageously, <laughs> outrageously successful. So um, I know there are probably some of you who've donated here today. So thank you, all of you. Um, wonderful. Anyway, on with the show. Uh, why, 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 why am I building Make Docs? Uh, because it's something that I needed. So for when I started working on the release of uh, Django REST Framework 2, I had some very specific ideas about how I wanted the documentation to look uh, and how I wanted it to work. And at the time, Sphinx didn't quite fit in with that. Uh, the themes are, uh, are much, much nicer now, but at the time I wasn't happy with any of that. And also because um, prior to using my docs, I was writing my documentation in RST, in Sublime Text. And I'm quite a visual person, and for me, being able to write my documentation in Markdown gives me a better flow in some of the nice Markdown editors, a better feel of the flow of the documentation. For me, I feel like being able to write my documentation with these kinds of tools helps me write better documentation because I can get more of a feel for how they're going to present to the end users. Um, so I really wanted something that was nice and simple and used Markdown to generate the documentation. So I started hacking away on a little script and... Um, at some point decided that I ought to take this hacky little Python script that just lives in the REST framework repository and turn that into something a bit more reusable and hopefully be able to use that for some future projects as well and open it up to everybody else to be able to use. So uh, this was the end result of how the documentation looked with this hacky little script and my end users were happy with it as well. So that's nice. Right, da da da. Uh, I want to spend most of this talk just giving you a very brief demo of using MuckDocs, just so you can get an idea of what the documentation layout looks like when you're working with it and uh, how simple it is. So, only a couple of prerequisites Python and PIP. Um, I would like, perhaps at some time in the future, to be able to package this up in a way that is invisible, that it uses Python so that we can deliver it to a wider community. But that's something on the long-term roadmap. So what do we do to get started? Uh, install MacDocs from PyPy. Uh, create a new project, which will populate the directory with a, a couple of initial files that we'll look at in a minute. And then we're going to start serving our site. So let's do that. So, I already have MuckDocs installed here. So, MuckDocs new demo. Close enough. <coughs> okay, so if we take a look down here, we can see that it's written this demo folder. And if we go in and have a look, and I hope that's just about. Wow, I won't bother. So, there's uh, inside. The directory that it's created, we've got two things. We've got a single configuration file, which is a YAML configuration file, and we've got a uh, docs folder with a single markdown file in it, which is our first page of uh, documentation. So let's cd into the directory and um, docs serve. There we go. And there we go. This is uh, the, the live server that you can run 
And there we have our documentation uh, being served locally. Fine. Okay. So what can we do with this? Uh, one of the nice things that's built into MacDocs is a nice little live reload feature. This means any time you alter anything in the configuration or any of the documentation, uh, the site that's being served will be automatically rebuilt, and all you have to do is go in and hit refresh in the browser, and you can see the effects of your changes. So if we go into here, let's just open up the index page, and let's change this to Mugdops Rocks. There's it rhymes. There you go. Nice and easy. Ah, uh, yeah, sure. I'll do a bit of that as well. <clears throat> okay, so quick rundown of how the documentation source files are organized. Um, everything goes into a folder called docs. It has to have an index.md file, which will be the home page. Um, you can sling other media in there, typically images, but video or audio, whatever else you want in there that you can link to from your documentation. And you can also sling in CSS and JavaScript. Any CSS and JavaScript that you sling in will automatically get included into your theme without you doing anything else. So you can make nice little tweaks to say how the uh, the hero headers get displayed on your leading page and nice little uh, things like that without having to change the theme wholesale. So have a quick look at that. Um, here's a folder where we've got a few more pages of documentation. If we just go back to the example that we're working on here, what I'm going to do is add a couple more pages. So let's create a... Uh, da, 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 da. You can see I've just added an about. And now I've added a new folder called user guide, which also has a couple more pages in it. We go and reload the documentation again. You can see we've now got a nav bar at the top that has included some extra pages. So here's our about page that we've just added and a couple of other pages and we can page back and forth between those. And all we've had to do was add the new markdown files into the folder in order to add them. Uh, similarly with images, just throw them into the docs directory, then you can hyperlink to them from the markdown files exactly as you normally would, and they'll be included in the, in the output, again with CSS. And you can also put in other useful things, such as, for instance, uh, this CNAME file, which is used by the GitHub pages uh, if you want to provide a custom domain and you're hosting your documentation on GitHub pages, you can include this little CNAME file where you just put in the domain name that GitHub should uh, understand the documentation to be served under. So um, one of the things that uh, restructured text is very strong at, which Markdown isn't so strong at, is interlinking. And obviously interlinking in your documentation is very important. So how do you do that with MacDocs? Well, the simplest way to link between pages is just to use uh, standard uh, hyperlinks to the documentation, to the, to the other pages. What you do is you include the hyperlinks as if they're hyperlinks to the markdown source files, and MacDocs will automatically translate that into the equivalent URL when it's building the documentation or when it's serving the documentation. Uh, this has quite a nice effect in that when you're working with your documentation in the editors, you're able to click on the links 
and it will automatically end up bringing you up the next page that you're working on, which is quite a nice way to work on it. Um, and the other thing that I'm in the process of adding to MacDocs, which isn't quite there, is a syntax for uh, slightly more intelligent interlinking that allows you uh, both to interlink to particular pages, but also to uh, particular sections of particular pages. So there's a simple syntax for doing that, which allows you either to just put in a, a ref without adding exactly any text that it's referenced against, and the top link here would link to a, any section it can find in the documents called project license. Uh, if you don't want the text of the link to match the section that you're linking against, you can instead be explicit about the name of the section that you're linking against, which is the second one down there. Uh, that's still in process, but that is, that's the idea. Uh, so configuration, everything goes in the one YAML configuration file. Uh, it must exist, and it has one required setting, and everything else is optional. So it's nice and simple. Um, there's an example there. And you can, you can use the config. So with the example that I've shown you at the moment, we've added some markdown files, but we haven't specified anything in the configuration for how to order them. So it's just automatically decided on an ordering for those. You can, uh, da, da, da. I won't bother doing it now, but you can set up the ordering for your pages by using the configuration file. You add uh, a key called pages, and then you just list the order of the source files that you want them to appear in. There you go, oh yeah. Getting ahead of myself. So themes, okay. Um, there's two different ways that you can theme your documentation. Uh, there's, a, there's a whole bunch of built-in themes that you can use, and you can also provide custom themes. So of the built-in themes that are available, we've got uh, this fairly kind of bootstrappy style, there's also a style based on the really fucking cool uh, read the docs theme that I can't remember who it was who developed it, but it's really quite nice. Um, and because the default style is based on Bootstrap as well, there's also a whole stack of uh, Bootswatch based themes available as well, which is really nice and easy to use. So for example, if we go into our configuration file here, and we say theme united, perhaps, there we go, brand new theme, lovely. Um, similarly, if you, if you want to, to create a completely custom theme of your own, you can do that. Um, nice and simple. The only thing that you need is a base.html file in your theme directory. You can uh, then include any other files that you need and all of the context that gets passed into that uh, template um, is, well, some of it is documented, some of it's in the process of being documented. Um, what we don't do is have anything like particular pages that only get pulled in, particular HTML pages that only get pulled in for particular markdown source files or anything complicated like that or anything like partially overriding a theme. If you want a new theme, either you're, you sling some CSS in your project directory or you just create a brand new theme directory with everything from scratch. It's just simpler that way around rather than dealing with, okay, I've got this base theme, but I want to override this bit and that bit. Um, oh yeah, and here's an example of what a theme directory might look like, right? So we've got a bunch of HTML files which will get uh, translated using Ginger2 
passing in the context, a couple of images, some fonts, styles, JavaScript. There you go. <clears throat> OK, so let's have a look at building the documentation. I'm going to go and do that now. There we go. So you can see building the documentation ends up creating a folder in there called site, which has, um, which has all of the final HTML files in there and all of the other media. There we go. And um, it builds completely static sites, so you can just host them from anywhere. Um, most of my documentation I happen to host from GitHub pages because it's really good and it's really simple. Um, Amazon S3 would work equally well. Um, and maybe one day there might be integrated support with Read the Docs, perhaps. Um, Eric has, has <laughs> talked about that and said that he'd like that but I just need to find some more time to work on the project first to make that happen. Cool. Uh, so one of the nice things that it also has built in is a nice easy way of deploying your site to GitHub Pages. So in case you don't already know, GitHub Pages is a way for GitHub to serve up static pages, and what it, what it does is you have to host your site on a branch of the main repo called GH Pages, and then GitHub will expose that uh, on a particular domain. I can't remember exactly what it looks like, but we'll find out in a minute. Oh, yeah, it will look like this. So let's go and have a look at the built-in um, GitHub Pages integration. All we have to do is mcdocs gh deploy. Huh. Uh, buh, buh, buh. Uh, yeah. There we go. Hang on a minute. I haven't added this site to GitHub yet. That would be a good plan. So uh, here's my empty repository. Uh, Tom Christie slash demo. Hasn't got anything in it yet. Let's just push our documentation up to GitHub. OK, that's done. So there's our documentation source up there. And now all we need to do is GH deploy. Da -da 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 -da. So builds the documentation and pushes that up to the GH Pages branch and tells you the URL that that should now be available on. And our documentation's live in the internet. Yay. OK. Um, da -da -da -da. So I'm trying to keep this super simple. Um, I'm not interested in exposing, say, a programmatic API to allow developers to override this with Python. Really, I just want to keep the overrides based on you can change the theme, and that's it. Um, this isn't a semantic, about being a semantic markup tool in the same way that RST can give you lots of extra information about well, this word is a class, and uh, it means this, that, or the other. This is just about taking simple markdown files and rendering them into HTML. Um, so it, it won't easily support going out into lots of other different formats, but I don't care. And yeah, this is a nice thing as well. Uh, the wonderful people at Docker have started using this for their documentation. So I better get my act together. Um, and what else? Yeah, stuff. 
It's happening. It's fun. And yeah, that's about all I've got to say. Thank you. Uh, so the question was about uploading the documentation to Cheese Shop documentation hosting. I didn't know there was such a thing. What, they host static sites or? Uh, setup.py upload docs. Oh, okay. New to me. Setup.py upload docs. I'll have a look. Yeah, yeah I, that sounds like a sensible option. So. Uh, no, so that's uh, that, the question was about uh, generating API documentation. So I assume you mean inspecting doc strings in Python and automatically. No, deliberately not actually. Um, really, I'm interested in aiming at prose style documentation. Um, I enjoy reading and writing pro style documentation more than I do uh, automatically generated API documentation. I'm not a big fan of that style. So yeah, this is just about textual stuff. Yeah. Uh, okay. Cool. Come and say hi. Okay. Thanks, everybody.